Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabanis. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. And we give you guys a fresh perspective on things uh, and how we see them. And today we got a hell of a show for you guys. Before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to hit all notifications to be notified the second we public, uh, publish our content. Let me get into this topic uh, uh, here. So yesterday, I came across a live interview that was being published on the PBD podcast, Patrick by David podcast. Um, and you guys know Patrick by David value team and these guys have a very, very big, uh, media platform. Uh, and usually they, they debut their full interviews on the PBD podcast. You saw some of that, uh, with the Andrew Tate podcast, but in that particular episode, it was featuring, uh, Stephen A. Smith. And when I clicked on it, the, 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 uh, what is it? The show had already commenced. So I kind of caught it. And actually, I caught it in the part where I didn't even know where I was. But as I was listening to it, I saw that they were discussing sports and they were talking about Jordan and all of that. So I said, OK, let me wait for the full interview to be finished and then I'll go back and listen to it. So I went back. I fast forward through the first maybe 75 percent of it because they were talking about politics and all of that. And I wasn't very interested in that. So it got to the part where they were talking about sports. And they kind of honed in on Michael Jordan and the last dance. And they were talking about Scottie Pippen, Isaiah Thomas and these and these people. Now, initially, when Scottie Pippen came out and broke his silence on the Dan Patrick show, that was really where he kicked everything off with this, with his offensive uh, towards Michael Jordan. That was his first salvo. Uh, where he really started going to Jordan, called Phil Jackson a racist, and that kicked it off. And then what happened subsequently was basically this campaign crusade against Jordan all by Scotty, and, and it shocked a lot of people, uh, including Michael Jordan himself, and it's something that a lot of us discussed. So what happened? About a year or so ago, Stephen A. Smith had alluded to a conversation that he had with Michael Jordan where he was reacting to some of the things that Scotty Pippen did. And of course, there were some Scotty defenders, but there was a particular part in this story where basically Jordan came to the realization that Scotty Pippen pretty much hated him uh, for a very, very long time. And it had really nothing to do uh, with the Last Dance docuseries. So during this sit down with himself uh, and Patrick but David, uh, that's what they really that's what they really got into. And Stephen A. Smith essentially revealed a private conversation um, that he had with Michael Jordan, where Jordan told him, you know, secretly how he really felt about Scottie Pippen and the things that he was doing in the moment where he realized that Scottie and himself were were basically through forever. So uh, for those of you who didn't hear that, we want to play it for you now and then want to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what Stephen A. Smith uh, had to say here. Last dance. Yes, sir. Do you think, you know, this whole no bull tour, Scotty, Horace Grant, and, you know, is it Wellington? I don't know who the other guy is. I think it's one of the senators that they're going around talking about what happened and, you know, how upset they were. And then Scotty comes out with the book, and I don't know who he did his interview with. And he said, how do you want to be remembered as Scotty? And he says, I want to be remembered as the greatest of all time, right? I watched Scotty do an analysis on TV He's actually really good given his analysis. I actually enjoy watching his analysis when he gives. You had an interview with him one time when he says LeBron versus this. And he says, you said, but uh, statistically LeBron, but Michael's the greatest of all time. So how could you say that? Michael at any point could average triple double. And he says, no, no. He says he couldn't. No, because it's not in his demeanor. I'd say the same thing about Kobe. And he's kind of given that uh, conversation. What, what do you think happened to Scotty to all of a sudden come out thinking he's you know, I want to be remembered as the greatest of all time. What what happened after think, Last Dance to Scotty? I think he wants the world to see him in a different light than he believes Michael Jordan has betrayed him as, particularly in The Last Dance. I would tell you Scotty Pippen is not accepting enough culpability for how Scotty Pippen ultimately influenced people to look at him. It was you that signed the contract that Jerry Reinstorf advised you not to sign because he said, you're not going to be able to come back and renegotiate. I'm telling you this right now. Don't do it. And Michael Jordan and others told him that he wouldn't listen. The same Scottie Pippen 
that is complaining about Jordan when Jordan was retired and was playing baseball. It was Scottie Pippen kicking the sneakers up in the ears for the cameras, showing that he was wearing Jordan and asking them to come back. And when Scottie Pippen wanted his new contract, it was him that was vacillating back and forth, playing hard, not playing hard, playing, not playing, and whatever, because he was pouting over his contract, et cetera, et cetera. And so you harbor responsibility. It was you that refused to enter the game when Phil Jackson called Tony Kukoc's number. That wasn't Michael Jordan. And so those things played a role in Scottie Pippen being viewed the way that he was viewed. But let's talk about how he's been viewed. He's a six-time champion, one of the elite defensive players that ever played this game of basketball, and a person that Michael Jordan himself, who I know well, has said on countless occasions, is the greatest team. I would have never won a championship without Scottie Pippen. He's the greatest teammate I've ever had. And I owe my six titles to him. So for Scotty, it's about the money that you don't have compared to what Jordan has. And it's about the lack of recognition. But my response is you on the basketball court with and without Jordan for a decade plus, you had ample opportunity to be seen as superior to Michael Jordan. You know better. <laughs> you know better. You were phenomenal. You were great. You're a Hall of Famer. You're an Olympic gold medalist. You're a member of the original Dream Team. All of that's true. You know good and damn well you were no Michael Jordan. Stop it. That's just how you feel because your frustration is coming out, and you know that's going to go on the headlines. But when you go that route, anybody that knows the game of basketball knows better. And I think that Michael Jordan is one of those guys. You know, Kobe was like that too. You could do a lot of things. Don't ever let them feel like they can attach the word betrayal to you. They don't come back from that. And when it comes to Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan feels betrayed. When Scottie revealed in his book his feelings for Michael Jordan and how he didn't even give his condolences in person to Michael Jordan. I was on the phone with Michael Jordan that day talking about something else. And then we had heard about what Scottie Pippen had said. And Michael Jordan was under the impression that it was just busy. It was chaotic and all of this other stuff. And that's why he never thought anything of it. But all of these years later, when Scottie Pippen had alluded to his father passing away, his father being murdered and how he didn't give his condolences on purpose. Michael Jordan's words were, I hope it's worth it. Wow. I mm. hope it's worth it for him. I have nothing. And he literally said, I have nothing else to say. Whoa. And I know Michael Jordan well enough to know what that means. So you heard what Stephen A. Smith had to say. What he said was the part that I was reacting to over the numerous shows that we produce, because throughout this saga, uh, there were people out there that were trying to come to the defense of Scotty. And I was calling BS on it, right? I was calling BS on it, especially for this part. Let's go through the situation once more. The Last Dance docuseries debuts. We all saw it. In the docuseries, they chronicled the six championships of the Chicago Bulls run the the dynasty in the midst of the in the midst of that docu series they were also highlighting key figures like Steve Kerr Phil Jackson uh, uh Horace Grant Michael Jordan Scottie Pippen Dennis Rodman and throughout the entire docu series they were basically showing the highs and the lows of all of these people including Michael Jordan it wasn't like a if they were talking about Jordan's highest moments they mentioned the whole story and Scotty was part of the story. Now here's what's interesting. Scotty, even though he hated Jordan secretly still decided to participate in the last dance. The last dance comes out, Scotty sees it and then he decides to go on this campaign. Then he starts talking about Jordan was a terrible teammate. Well, when did you realize Michael Jordan was a terrible teammate? Was it after the, 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 the last dance or was it before? Because I personally believe that all of these things, all of these feelings, these negative emotions that Scotty harbored to Jordan went w existed w way before 
the last dance docuseries came out and what gets me is whenever you would see scotty and jordan together they always seem happy Jordan and these guys, and Jordan and Scotty genuinely seem happy to see each other. And that's the reason why I personally believe that MJ was blindsided by Scotty's attacks. Blindsided. Every time they talked to Jordan and they asked him about his championship run, he would always say, always, I could have never won those six championships without Scotty Pippen. I could have never done it. Whenever they asked him, even hypothetical conversation, uh, you know, questions. If you had to play a pickup game and you had to pick five teammates, four teammates, who would you pick? He always said, I'll go with Scotty first. When Scotty Pippen was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, doing his Hall of Fame enrichment speech, who was the one that introduced him? It was Michael Jordan. This big, bad, evil Michael Jordan was the one that was always propelling and propping up Scotty Pippen in the media and in the public. But then when the, da the last dance docuseries comes out, all of a sudden, now we're finding out that Scottie Pippen felt all of these things about Jordan. Now, he's a horrible person. He's a horrible teammate. He's selfish. He was a horrible player. All of these different things, right? And to me, the part that gets me, which was the part that Stephen A. Smith pointed out, was during uh, the moment when Jordan's father passed away, Jordan thought that the reason Scottie didn't express his condolences was because of the things going on, and he was busy, whatever. He had no idea that the reason Scotty didn't wish, you know, send him his condolences for his father was because he secretly hated him. And it was at that point Jordan realized this relationship is over. Because what I think Jordan uh, realized was Scotty was really never his friend. I think Jordan viewed Scotty as a friend, but Scotty never viewed Jordan as a friend. And Scotty still decided to participate in the Last Dance docuseries because he thought there was some money. So if you thought Jordan was this evil, bad person, why did you decide to be a part of that docuseries? Nobody can answer this. No one can come up with a succinct answer for this. No one. And what has happened is Scotty has triangulated himself into a, into a corner where everyone is looking at him sideways. Everyone. Then they just recently decided to do the no bull story. Nobody wants to hear this. Nobody wants to hear this. To me, it sounds like Jordan was hurt. He was, I'd be hurt too. I would be hurt that if this was my road dog, this is a guy I've been running with. I, we went, we had all these incredible memories together just to find out that this person has been feeling this way about me for decades. But every time they see me, they hugging it up, kumbaya and smiling and doing all of this stuff. But this is what they really felt like all these years. I would be blindsided too. And I think you would be too. I think you would be too. I think at the end, the person that suffers the most is Scotty. Scotty Pippen came out of this situation looking horrible. Absolutely horrible. There's so many audios and footage out there of Scotty saying negative things about Jordan, but you can't find one of Jordan publicly saying anything negative about Scotty Pippen. And Stephen A. Smith revealed what Jordan, what Jordan truly felt about Scotty Pippen's painful betrayal. Because it, 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 folks, that's exactly what it was. The fact that the matter is we wouldn't be talking about Scottie Pippen today if it wasn't for Michael Jordan. Everything that Scottie has done since to sell his book, to sell his liquor, whatever the hell it is, always involved Jordan. Even the No Bull Tour was about Jordan. These people can't go anywhere without mentioning Jordan because they know no one would care if they didn't mention, mention Michael Jordan. So what I want to know from you guys, what do you think about Stephen A. Smith's revelation? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We catch you guys on the next show. Peace.